To use the headland turn feature, we need to do a few settings first. So the starting point would be with our uh, with our implement. So we come into our implement manager. I uh, come into my uh, my particular implement that I've got on, and I uh, come into the uh, into the turn settings. So I activate that, and I get a uh, a few more um, bits and pieces of uh, of information. So here is I've got my uh, my working width of my machine but I now get a, a new figure here which is asking for the total width of my, uh, my machine. So this would be including any, uh, any guarding. So I could like, say that uh, my physical width of the machine is uh, six and a half meters, but my working width of the machine is, uh, is six meters. I've set a figure here of one meter just pushing my implement bar back off the tractor but again this figure here would be putting in the total uh, length of the implement so I could again say that was uh, 1.5 in this uh, in this example here so this is all these figures here this figure here and this one here is taking into account is all the uh, um, all the, the shrouding the guards that are on the on the implement I have two more figures to uh, to populate and this is my uh, minimum uh, turn radius. So if I've got a three point mounted machine on, is all I have to do is uh, turn the steering wheel full lock one way, hit the uh, record button, it'll automatically populate that figure. I can uh, steer the other way, hit the, uh, hit the record button, and it will uh, populate that figure there. So with the three point mounted implement, I can just go to the maximum steering angle uh, possible. If I was a trailed implement, then is I need to be I need to be moving when I'm setting this because what I want to do is turn and uh, and and see at to, at to which point then I'm going to start to maybe uh, rub up against the uh, the drawbar of the uh, of the implement. And once I'm at that angle, then I can re record that particular uh, that minimum uh, steering radius that I, I'd have for that trailed implement. But once that's uh, once that's done, is we can come back out. Of the of the screen now, I've already got a uh, a way line um, populated within the uh, within the field that uh, that I'm in, and so we can see our uh, our outer field boundary. And I now need to uh, to create a uh, a headland in there, an inner boundary. So where I do that is I come into my uh, into my field settings, come to the uh, come to the third button along the top. And I can now set a headland width in there, so I can touch touch on that box there, and I can say, for argument's sake, that we are. I want a a 24 meter uh, headland in this example here. If I just quickly come back out the screen, there is you can now see that we've got a a, a 24 meter uh, inner boundary in the field, so we're on 24 meters um, across from uh, from that uh, from my physical boundary width. So to create my uh, my turn is I come back into my uh, into my settings. I come across to my uh, my turn uh, icon up here, and in the screen here then is I can see what my uh, my turn radius is for the tractor and implement combination I've got on. We also have another figure here which relates to this dashed line, and so this figure here is like saying is bring the tractor straight. So it's pulling straight, pulling the implement straight. A set distance before we get our to our headland line here. So at the moment, in this example here, I've got it set that it's going to be pulling the tractor straight one meter before the headland line. But I could say change it up to six meters or uh, or, or whatever uh, I wanted to in this example. But then that will have an effect then in our uh, our overall uh, our overall turn within the turns then is I can choose between four different turns. I have the U-turn, the part field mode. So the U-turn part field mode, that's where the tractor is always moving forwards. Uh, it's not changing direction. And so that's ideal then if I've got a trailed implement on the machine. 
the other two modes then is I got my K turn or my Y turn and so this is ideal if I've got a three point mounted implement or a very uh, small headland and where I need to make a direction change so I'm going to do if you like a three point turn on the head so I'm going to chop and change between forwards and uh, and reverse so we can choose our uh, our turn and we'll, we'll start with uh, start with the K turn on there and uh, it's down here then is we say is to where we're going to start the uh, start the sequence so I press in the uh, start at way line and it will automatically populate then as to uh, on my uh, on my first way line or if I moved across the field a bit further um, and it might have said way line four is where I was starting at the moment this is the way line that I've just created that I'm starting on I can say then as to how many uh, passes I want to miss so at the moment I'm going to go up my first way and I'm going to come straight back down on myself but I wanted to is I could move across two or I could go shunt across uh, uh, I could shunt across um, five uh, way lines on there but I'm going to stick with uh, moving across one and then I'm saying as to whether I'm going to be turning left or I'm going to turn right so in my example I'm going to go carry on turning to the uh, to the right there so once I've set up my uh, my sequence or where I want to be heading to is I hit the uh, I can hit the calculate button and up here is it will tell me as to how many turns the system can do automatically but then also how many turns that it can't do because that might be that I'm in a particularly tight part of the field or a very awkward shape field I can preview uh, that so I can see exactly as to uh, where uh, where we're going and if there are any turns that it can't be uh, can't be making then they would be uh, highlighted in black if i do have a high percentage of turn figures in here that it can, that the system can't make it might be then that my uh, my headland boundary might be uh, might be too small on there it might be i've not reset my uh, my turn radius by looking at my maximum min uh, turn angles on there or it might be that this figure here is uh, is set too high that that uh, is having uh, having a, an effect but once I'm uh, I'm ready to go is I can hit the uh, hit the back arrow on here I can then activate the uh, the auto turn feature and we can see then the way line that we're going to travel down and where we're going to be making the turn we're now approaching our uh, our turn on here so as we uh, approaching our, our marker is we'll see then the uh, the tractor start to uh, to steer is when I feel that I've got uh, got enough space then to make my turn is I make the uh, direction change so I always have to make that direction change manually um, on there to go between forwards and reverse but then the tractor will uh, will follow the uh, the path round and when I've got the uh, space again I change uh, change direction let the uh, let the tractor uh, pull itself round on the on the turn so it's making sure then it's going straight uh, six meters before and then I can drop my uh, my implement back down into work and away we go see then that the tractor is now turning in the opposite uh, in the opposite direction I still then alter my uh, driving direction put it into uh, into reverse back into our, uh, our direction um, for, uh, for work. If we have a look then at the, uh, the part field mode is we set it up exactly the same way and we can see now in the field it will uh, come up this way line it will uh, skip across five and then it will double back on itself to keep filling in and it will keep then cycling across the uh, across the field. I can alter my uh, my my jump width, so it'll go from a minimum of five up to uh, up to fifteen. So if I said, for instance, sakes, I wanted to uh, skip across uh, seven runs in here, I can recalculate uh, that. Again, have a look at the preview map 
and we can see exactly then how the uh, how the system is uh, is working. So we can see with the turn then it's going to uh, skip across. next run then we're going to come back in and we'll pitch in beside where uh, where we last uh, last worked and we'll start to uh, start to infill Finish that uh, that particular land. Then it's now going to uh, now going to switch over to uh, to work another uh, another land set of uh, set of lands. We have a look at the uh, the U-turn in here. Is again we can sort of say as whether we want to uh, come back in on ourselves. But uh, in this example, then if I say that we'll uh, we'll actually skip across uh, say two runs in here. Again, I choose my uh, my direction. If I hit the uh, hit the calculate, it's now saying that we've got to, we'll be doing uh, three turns because we're going to go up, we're going to miss one run, we're going to come back down. So we're just going to keep working in one direction, and then we uh, we backfill uh, the the field in the in the opposite direction there. So we see now that we're uh, we're approaching our uh, our turn. So we'll do a bit of a, a keyhole turn to uh, to get the space. Now that I've finished working the field uh, in one direction. I can come back into my settings, go back into the uh, into the turn, say that I'm going to be turning in the uh, in the opposite direction. Set my way lines. So I'm going to be starting on way line seven. Hit the uh, hit the calculate. I can look back at my and I'm going to work the field in the uh, in the opposite direction.